If you're watching this, then you know by now a huge problem is heading our way. An emergency meeting is being called at our usual place immediately. Free bagels. My initial impressions when I first read the script for Moonfall was that, oh my gosh, this is going to be a huge endeavor. And um, I loved I loved the script because not only did it have all the action and all the excitement of, you know, an alien movie, but it also had the heart of, um, you know, families trying to work out their problems and, and real problems of divorce and separation and alcoholism and all of these problems that um, was going to get in their way of figuring out who they really were um, and how they can save the world. But at the end, you know, they they figure out how to work out their problems while saving the world. <laughs> when I first realized that this was a Roland Emmerich film, I freaked out because Independence Day is one of my favorite movies. It's one of those movies that I watch at least once a year. Um, so when I found out it was a Roland Emmerich movie, I was super excited, but then really scared because I was really nervous. Um, but then when I met him, he's just so friendly and he's a man that just thinks, he's always thinking about something and he's always, you can kind of see he's going like, well, if I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this, like his mind always is going and is never stopping. Um, but he's been so generous with us, uh, really making strong decisions about our characters. Uh, so that was a really fun aspect. I could really work uh, with Michael Pena about what our relationship looked like, what our history looked like, and um, you know what kind of dynamic is in the household and stuff. And Roland was always really game about indulging us actors, <laughs> about creating our story and being able to make these like strong choices for ourselves. He gave us the meat and potatoes, and then we just piled on top of it. I play the character Brenda Lopez, who is married to Tom Lopez, played by Michael Pena, and the ex-wife of Patrick um, Wilson's character, Brian Harper. Um, so originally she was married to Brian um, and had Sonny as their child. The relationship didn't work out because Brian Harper was completely overcome by his failures at NASA, and she left and married um, Tom. She really struggles to maintain a balance between the two families. Brian really pulls her in another direction uh, with Sunny. And Sunny, I don't think ever really forgave her for maybe leaving Brian. So she's got this son who's in anguish and these two really beautiful daughters from this new family. And she's trying to balance the two families and her whole journey is to try and find harmony between the two families. Um, and which I think that she does towards the end. When the first devastation happens in LA, when the big tidal wave comes in, um, Brenda knows that Sunny is stuck in LA. And that has happened so many times on our planet where there's been a natural disaster and families have been separated. And for me, that's what really drove the first part of the film for her was her absolute not knowing what the right decision is. Do I go and do I try to get to LA and in, you know, in any way possible, because flights are canceled, roads are blocked, or do I try and get my daughter safe so then I can go and, and rescue Sunny? And this is, that's the whole thing that's tearing her apart and also creates a lot of friction between her and Tom because his, his plan is to get the girls really, to get them safe. And, but all she can think about is, is my son underwater? Is he alive? Is he dead? What's, what's going on? So that whole first trajectory is, you know, the anguish of a family that's been separated and doesn't know if they're ever gonna see each other again. I loved the casting of the character of Brian because on paper, he's such an unlikable person. He drinks too much, can't hold down a job doesn't pay his rent and then you cast Patrick Wilson in it and you're like oh damn it but I like him um and then on paper you see Tom who's this really straight edge type a character but then you cast Michael Pena in it and you're like oh my god but he's like so sweet and what really unites the two characters is they're both hot-headed is they both just fly off the handle 
and Brenda's always kind of there just to bring them back to earth and be like, guys, come on, let's focus on what really needs to get done. Um, and I loved that they both pulled me in that direction. You can kind of see that she has spent her life just like dealing with Brian. Now she's dealing with Tom, but at least he makes it easier for her. <laughs> Sonny is a great character. I mean, he plays a young man who is quite frustrated in his life um, and frustrated with his mom, frustrated with his dad, doesn't really know what to cling to. Um, and you see him, you see him grow into a man by the end of the film. He takes responsibility for his life, for the life of his family, and realizes how important all of that is. So he sheds, he sheds that adolescent feeling about him. And, and by the end of the film, he becomes, you know, he becomes a man. I know that's a cheesy thing to say, but it's true. <laughs> Charlie has been an absolutely so much fun to work with. He was already maybe like a month and a half in when I arrived to shoot the film. So he really showed me the ropes and kind of let me in on all the set dynamics and all the goss. So, um, so it was just such a blast to, to work with him. And I keep looking at him and being like, you're so smart. You're so mature. You're 20. I'm like, wow, what a wonderful, what a wonderful man that I get to, that I get to work with and bounce ideas off of and um, always so helpful on set and offering to be the eye line or throw you lines or, you know, give you ideas. He's just, he's just such a gem to work with. Roland is absolutely a technical genius and the strange thing about this film is that we've almost shot everything in a room. Like we're in one room where we've shot car chase scenes, homes, workplaces, these incredibly intricate sets get built and then it's so easy to actually just feel at home. For example, our, our Colorado house, I walked in there and I was like, um, can I just nap here? Because there's like a fire going, there's some leather couches. It was just so cozy. And I was also like, is that for sale? Cause I will take it all. It was just so well done. Um, and shooting, you mentioned shooting in blue screen. I mean, I saw, he showed us his vision of what the car chase was gonna look like. And I just thought, how is this going to happen. We're in a room and there's three cars chasing each other. Um, and then once we got into it, it actually felt like we were on this roller coaster ride, like a bumper car. Like we're, there's cars bumping into us. There, there's, you know, 18 wheelers flying above us. It was such a surreal experience. And I had to keep saying to myself, I'm getting paid for this. This is my job. <laughs> this is so fun. Kelly's been so fantastic to work with. Um, we hadn't met before. She flew in from China. She's also been working on the film way before I have. So she also was so welcoming and just kind of showing us the ropes on set. Um, yeah, she's just this really hyper talented human being. She showed us some of her work from China and I was just so happy that we got to have her for this movie. Like we just got so lucky that she's Canadian and also got to work, you know, was eligible to work on the film as well. It's on airplane mode. Looks like we're in for nasty weather.